This is Hermes. Welcome, thank you for coming. What is it that you need? I just learned about you from Terence McKenna and I uh, wanted to meet you and ask um, about you. Yes, I am someone who is different than most. So you were shown with a big on Egyptian uh, picture. Yes. Uh, so are you uh, are you Khufu or is it a different version of, of, uh, of a bird? It is a different version, but we are the same similar species. Oh. Um, so you were the author of uh, uh, Hermetic Corpus, so the books about uh, the spirituality? They gave me credit for these books. <coughs> they were interpreted from a, other languages and some information was not copied correctly. Uh -huh. But it is basically my work. Uh, were you in the same time as Kofu? We were not. <clears throat> We were at the same time overlapping. Uh huh. Uh, did you meet? Did you work together? We worked together only briefly. Uh, are you of the, in, in agreement of the strategy? Which one? There were many. Uh, right. Were you uh, very much working on the same plan as Coop, or did you have some different agendas? I had many agendas, but we worked on some similar ones. He was interested in what I had to offer because of the, of the way things would come to me and the knowledge that I had of the cosmos. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So how much of your attention was on Earth? How much were you on Earth and how much uh, you were elsewhere? I was on Earth about only a few years, but ah. I made a difference there because uh -huh. I introduced <clears throat> forms of meditation that they did not have, mm -hmm. forms of understanding that they did not have, So which, which countries uh, uh, received your knowledge? Or which races received your knowledge on Earth? Samaria, Egypt, uh -huh. Greece, sometimes in Rome. Uh -huh. Roman Empire, I should say. The Atlantean people also, before me, knew of this information. Uh-huh. The Anunnaki also knew of this information. Uh huh. They were the beginning of your life forms as you know them. All right. Which species was that? What? Uh, please continue. They were the beginnings of the life forms as you know them, so that they could help mine the gold they were looking for. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But remember, gold has properties that humans know nothing about, at least how to manipulate the properties. That is uh -huh. why alchemy became so popular. Right. The mysticisms and magic that I taught were through the Akashic records uh -huh. because that was the one first thing you must learn to do if you were my student is access them. But it may not say that in the, the books that were written 
because it may not have been quite understood that way. Right. The meditations are fourfold. You have the mind, body, and spirit. There uh -huh. are th the dream state, I should say. Mind, body, and dream state. Awake, asleep, and this kinds of understanding. You understand where I'm talking about. These are the three kinds of awareness, three kinds of consciences. Uh, awake, sleep, and spiritual meditation? Awake, sleep, and dream. I see. Mm -hmm. These are the three different consciousnesses from your realm. The right, fourth right. one reaches out beyond all your realms uh -huh. into the cosmos. Right. It is a, a cosmic consciousness. Uh -huh. that you can only reach during deepest meditations. Right. And therefore, it was how to reach the Akashic records or the information that was beyond this realm. Right. Now, in recent years on your world, they've discovered that even the fabric of space is algorithmic or has certain electronic principles to it that would seem to be part of a computer system. This, right, is, right. this is because your creator is our energy and as he created the things in the universe, they, he created them from uh, an intellectual standpoint at first, and then a more artistic standpoint secondary. Right. So therefore, you are dealing with a highly advanced realm of information uh -huh. and it can be accessed but the information brought back from this realm may not be understood and you must be able to understand it to be able to carry it forth to the people mm -hmm. that is why i was there is because i was able to bring forth information to your realm that would further and advance it at that time. Mm -hmm. and that information continues to advance your species even now. Right. What questions do you have? Yeah, how are we doing according to the plan? It looks like we were um, sidetracked. What do you think? I believe that you as individual peoples have sidetracked the thought process that the universe would have laid upon you. But that is rather normal for most civilizations. You see, you have been led all along by the information of the universe and by those who have visited. Do you think there was so many accidental crashes and so much accidental information left on your planet by other species? Do you think that was an accident? I think not. They were guiding and leading you in certain directions certain understandings and certain areas of thought that needed to be looked at at specific times in history. You have achieved incredible advancement within the last 65 years. This advancement is not an accident. 
but is being led by the universe and those in it. You are being brought to a place in the future. Ah. So we're doing okay? You are doing as well as expected. Uh, we are looking at the medieval times and it looks like the Europe, medieval Europe was really going the wrong way. There was inquisition and, uh, and people just burned books and uh, uh, it, it, the, the culture was going down. These times of fear and darkness were necessary for the future to be what it is. You must understand every civilization goes through a period of reform, of change, of uh -huh. course, more than one. This was the age of fear and misunderstanding, and from it came a great logic and renaissance. So therefore, it was necessary for the renaissance to come in as strongly as it did. Had there not been a dark age and an age of fear, then advancement would have been much slower in the coming centuries. Um. McKenna reminds us that, Terence McKenna reminds us that um, it, materialism as a science was given to us by an angel, uh, by, by Gabriel. Uh, it was given to Descartes, Rene Descartes. And um, uh, right now we look at materialism as something very outdated and very um, uh, backward. Uh, but uh, if our angels gave it to, to, to us, then maybe there was some meaning into that, there was some positivity in that. It was meant to be so that you discovered and went through the phase of materialism. It had to happen at some point. It was given to you to experience and to learn its flaws and its positivities. And now you know how to advance yourself beyond it. Without ever experiencing it, or having experiencing it too late, you would not have been taken this far into your uh, probable future. Right. So, so it wasn't a dark angel, it was a proper angel which gave it to us, right? It was a positive Of course. Step. All things given to humanity were given at the right time for the right reasons. You may not have handled it correctly, or you may have handled it exactly the way you, they wanted you to. But the thing is this, they knew how to advance your species to get to you, to get you to where you are now. And that is, at this time, a time of great change and a great, a great watershed for humanity. You will experience some interesting political and socioeconomic changes as well as scientific amazement in the near future. Um, so Someone says, I think it could be Blavatsky, but I'm not sure, that uh, the main um, goal of our root race, the race which came after Atlanteans, the Homo sapiens, is to develop the willpower in the third chakra. And, third, uh, go ahead. The third chakra is where your living now. Your whole planet is in third chakra thought process, moving toward the heart chakra, but it is not ready quite to move there. You see that the third chakra has to do with many things that are happening all around your planet, including finances, 
including planning, including drive and intention for prosperity, including the less likelihood of uh, old spirituality, but new thoughts on spirituality. Do you see this? Yes. And yes, that is where your whole civilization lives. Um, so looking at the free, free choice, free will and free choice. And um, so right now we're looking at Christianity as a deception which took away the knowledge of reincarnation and took away and uh, the modern Western uh, mindset is uh, actually excluding the spirituality altogether. They are very materialistic. So we look at that as a, as a deception and mistake, but maybe it was intentional. So Christianity, I think, voted and uh, manipulated the knowledge around the fourth century to exclude reincarnation and uh, and then they did a lot of other things to exclude the belief of the spirituality so then the the, the materialistic person and the atheistic person is really a force to to think for themselves and uh, and make free choice out of desperation they don't believe there is anything supporting them so on, 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 on from that point of view that was a positive moment because it developed the third chakra and willpower Free will has been altered because you have given yourself over to other people's thought processes. Your free will has been invaded. If you choose to believe that you have full free will, you, fool, you are kidding or fooling yourself. There are others manipulating you in government and in societies. This thought process will come to an end eventually. You will have free will at some point. But Christianity is one of those invasions. As you become a part of any formal religion, you give away some of your free will to that society, to their rules and to their regulations. You are no longer functioning on your free will, but on the will of others. This is how you are being manipulated by the universe as well. The universe sees that you will give them what they want. They will give you information to excite you and you will follow through wanting more. So you will bow to the wills of those around you to get what you feel is necessary for yourself and your world. Whereas true free will does not exist any longer. Um, I'm teaching and we are teaching to, uh, to, to, uh, submit to the will of, um, uh, the creator and help the creator to restore the harmony. Is it Once also you submit to the creator? He takes your will and it's no longer your own. Right. So is it? advise do you advise to that or you say that we should still do free will and not submit to anyone even the creator no what i am saying is it's just a fact that you have very little free will any longer uh -huh. what you do have you have given away if you choose to give it to an entity or a spiritual place this is much better acknowledgement of your uh, the way you use your energies than to try to be a spiritual person without any kind of guidance. 
So you must give over some of your free will to God if you want to be guided correctly. Now, those that still have full free will follow no one or nothing. You will find very few examples of them in the world. But John the Baptist was one of these kinds of people. He is one that did only what he felt was right and followed no laws, rules, or regulations per se, but only followed what he felt God wanted him to do. That was his only submission. Um, thank you. Terence McKenna describes the idea of Logos, uh, Logos being a voice of God, which was guiding people, especially in Hellenistic culture, until about the time of Christianity, the time of Christ, and then it stopped. And, um, and then the people were left to themselves without any guidance. So I wonder if that stopping of the Logos was uh, intentional to let people develop their free will. The reason that they stopped speaking to Logos or Logos stopped speaking to them was because of fear once, once again and interference by those that had great doubts. Before the church started, there was those that thought speaking to God was witchcraft in a negative way because they felt that they were trying to manipulate what they were doing and they did not want any manipulation by others or by an, a single person. Whereas they would listen to a group of people because they thought groups were much more wise. However, listening to Logos from one person was frightening because it was too honest and too pointed for them to want to experience from one person. So this fell by the wayside because they were afraid of it. And it was a time of great change once again. But remember this. Free will still was one of the topics of the day and will always be a topic to be discussed. Free will was them deciding that Logos was not the God, but that others who had spiritual ideas were better off because they could follow man easier than God. Right. So it was a negative uh, development from the side of humans. It wasn't turned down, turned off by the higher spirits. Correct. Is it still uh, functional? It is functional. I see. Many people these days in this era do speak to God and do channel him and do understand that he is speaking. Of course, he cannot come in in fullness as he once did because there is too much confusion, disruption in this plane to come in in a clear and full way as he did before. But he still can get through to bring through some of the words that he needs to bring. So when you said uh, once, once the Logos was coming through in full, what times were there? That was back in the, the era where it was happening in Russia. Like before Jesus? Yes. And after, to some extent. Okay. but much what? less. I see. Um, there is a story that you built a, a city of sun and the city had uh, an eagle on one uh, 
uh, there were four gates, and one gate had an eagle, moving talking eagle, another gate had a lion, another gate had a bull, and another gate had a dog. And the city had moving images inside it, and these images made people spiritual and uh, perfect, so they weren't affected by sin and uh, degradation. So it was an ideal society. Can you comment on that? What was that? The four figures on the tops of the walls were the four figures that sit beside the throne of God, the four <laughs> earliest species. <coughs> These are the great ones that help with the rule of the universe. They are still there, sitting beside God in some ways, in their high dimensions. Now, within the city, the reason for the moving, movement of the animals was to show that they too had the energy and spirit of life. Life was what was precious to them. And to be reminded of how precious life was, was to keep them on a road of purity of thought and action letting them know that they too had great purpose. And so life was the precious indulgence that they must understand. And so it became a pure line of thought. Uh, so there, wasn't, there was no cat on, the, on that, uh, there is no cat by the throne of God? Not originally, there was not. I see. So the names are right? It's eagle, lion, a bull, and the dog? It would seem so. I see. Um, so it, was this a uh, city on earth? It was a part of an earthly dimension, yes, but it did not last in that way for much longer. It was interrupted and destroyed. How long was, was it here? Only for a few decades. Uh, what is it called now? It has no name at this point. So there is no city on top of it? No. What geographical location was it? General location, north of Leningrad. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, there, is a, there are nice leftovers there. Uh, I saw the video of uh, interesting stones. Uh, yeah, I think I know the place, actually. Wow. Uh, was it in the time of... Uh, Egypt, e Egyptian culture? Is it before Christ? Yes. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, I wanted also to ask about time. We are thinking about the life somehow um, happening in time. So all the time is uh, not existent elsewhere, but in our, in our uh, world it is very powerful. And uh, the time, is it, right, is it right that time is necessary for free will? Time is necessary for what? For the free will to happen. For previews? No, free wills. Free oh, will. free will. No, it, it, it could happen without it, but time is a good gauge for what, it gave us a good gauge for when things needed to happen. And so to be able to gauge how much knowledge was being brought to the earth at one time was a positive thing. It had little to do with free will, but more to do with the evolution of your species. So at some point, we are making choices. Yes. And uh, 
very often we are forced to make choices by the hurry we, because time is time is short and we have to choose one or another to survive yes very often so when we make a choice uh, the the second choice or the other choices are basically uh, don't manifest don't manifest we choose one and we so there are all other options like choosing a wife you choose one wife but all other possibilities don't manifest correct so it looks like time is uh, time is a factor there yes time is a factor there but that is in the unimportant areas of evolution in some ways what you do day to day does not affect evolution usually what does is the movement of information the movement of thought process the world view and these kinds of things now each and every action of every human does somehow affect that but not in a large way all right uh-huh yeah so it looks like that the timeline splits every time we make a choice and does the it collect timeline, the timelines are set up to move with the thought processes of the people the information of the time and the advancements in cultures and science the timelines are sensitive to pertinent information and information that changes the direction of a culture uh, take for example uh, hermeticism the movement that you helped to start and then Christianity basically repressed it. And McKenna got a vision that at some point there was a split in timeline and in another timeline Christianity didn't even happen. So Hermeticism might have uh, developed way farther and the society developed way faster and way farther. That timeline would benefit from that, but you are not in that timeline and so it becomes a benign thought process to want to study it i understand i'm just trying to understand the the role of time the role of time is to pinpoint the areas where change needs to happen that is uh, one of the great roles of time Another is to form, make a format for the future and guide you directly into the places that are necessary for human life to go. All right. So McKenna, Sheldrake, and Heimerov um, speak about the, um, uh, uh, the causality being reversed in time that uh, certain events uh, certain events and certain goals uh, direct the, the events in life so it's not only that there is a cause in the past there is a cause in the, in the future and it attracts certain developments certain uh, seemingly random events are attracted to certain outcome of course that is what i am saying Uh, also, Hamirov speaks about um, consciousness being a, a collapse of the wave function, basic collapse of uncertainty into certainty. In some, in some thought processes, yes. A collapse of a group can cause um, a change of thought processes within the whole realm. However, when these kinds of things happen, there are always new beginnings. And this is what the goal was all along. To find the place where the old thought process will collapse 
and the new one will begin. Uh, it has to be timed perfectly so that the effects of the collapse will cause the right thoughts and group interactions to cause a new beginning in a different range of understanding. I understand what you're saying. Um, I think you misunderstood my question. Let me, let me clarify it. Ah, I am sorry. Uh, um, there, is a, there is a lot of uncertainty in, 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 in the world. And uh, some things are not manifested. They are only existing as, as possibilities. Yes. And then when we think about them, they come into uncertainty, especially when we speak about them. They become much more certain. Yes. So that's the idea of uh, collapsing uncertainty into certainty and defining the cautiousness as, the, as a series of those uh, multiple collapses. Yes. So we, when we think we make uncertain things more certain, especially when the Western people think, like, I think a lot of um, tribal uh, tribal uh, culture is uh, that they are existing in a st state of uncertainty. They don't have to to uh, collapse the, the uncertainty into certainty. But in the Western logical way of thinking, we have to always be precise, and that's where we make it everything certain. Yes. So defining this consciousness as a physical, so basically the physical mechanism for consciousness can be defined as collapsing uh, uncertainty into certainty. Correct. Huh. But remember this, every part of the world that you live in is guided by a different social karma or consciousness. Uh -huh. The Western world sweeps through the whole world with its particular brand of consciousness and idealism. Whereas other parts of the world, such as these tribal areas, are sometimes oblivious to that wave. It passes over them and does not affect them at all. Right. So their social consciousness is more of a cloud that hangs over them and does not sweep the world. But it will eventually change. But there are reasons for these pockets of uh, stability, if you want to call them that, because they maintain their traditions, their cultures, their idealisms, or yet another, another uh, era. And it is necessary for them to do this because it will give the future as they are the those that are sweeping across the world the perspective on where they are in the change of thought processes um i don't right. know how to say that any better yeah mckenna described that process for uh, amazon tribes they were um, innocent and um, traditional and were very advanced in terms of telepathy and uh, Correct. spirituality and even uh, uh, knowledge of the universe. Of course. And, and, and then Western civilization came there and uh, corrupted them into modern Western style, style of uh, life, which uh, destroyed the ecosystem and destroyed the uh, society and community. Correct. You will eventually return to this tribal thought process in some ways because it will become the more advanced way to think, but not quite yet. Um, right. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm missing that. I, I, I remember from the previous lives, I think I remember the tribal life. Uh, it's a combination of tribal and academic life. I, I mean, it, I think it was both. It was uh, academic science in a tribal setting. Well, let me go back to the beginning of when I first spoke. Uh -huh. The deep meditation has three human 
consciousness, awake, sleep, and dream. And the fourth is the cosmic consciousness, which these tribes have to certain ex points, to a certain e extent. And that is what is necessary for civilization to continue in some ways, is to be able to connect with God in a more direct way, with the consciousness of the universe in a more direct way, so that the information that is necessary for you to move forward will continue to come to your planet and make changes. You will find that there are those in society that when sudden change comes, like the invention of the telephone, more than one person on the planet was inventing the telephone at the same time. You right. will see that there are uh, different kinds of educations. Einstein's thought processes came on him suddenly from the universe. Tesla gave, got ideas from the universe. They just appeared in his mind because they were able to collect this information from the universe. The universe is always speaking at the right time to advance your civilization. Do you not find that interesting? Yes, absolutely, yep. Uh, yeah, this that's is a great how the, the universe is working to guide and direct your planet to survive and not to die. But well, you yourselves have a death wish at times. So the universe must keep you alive and advance you. Right. Thank you. Um, I, speaking about time, I have about 18 minutes left. I wanted to speak to Logos if possible. Would it be possible to connect to Logos? To God, yes. Uh huh. It was interesting speaking to you. Yeah, I, I'm very excited to have met you, and uh, I would love to continue that conversation. Well, I have lots more questions. Very well. It shall be that the Thank continuation you. will be. Thank you.